So I'm here today at uh, Tidewell Foundation's Blue Butterfly uh, program. And um, I'm actually about to walk in with uh, Debbie Danheiser of Debbie Danheiser Threads. Um, and she's also doing um, uh, some donating um, of some of the proceeds for leggings that she's doing for the Blue Butterfly program. And um, I've also partnered, as you know, with Tidewell Foundation, uh, selling uh, bl the uh, bracelets with butterflies in honor, here I'll show you my, in honor of my good friend Denise that passed uh, last year of uh, GBM, um, glioblastoma uh, brain cancer. And, um, and she left behind a son and, um, and they have this program with Tidewell. Tidewell was actually, uh, Tidewell Hospice was there for my friend Denise, um, in the uh, last days of her life. And she was able to, um, pass in her home because of, uh, Tidewell Hospice. Um, now Tidewell Foundation has a program called the Blue Butterfly Program, and this is for the children. Um, this is for grieving children that have lost um, that have lost a loved one, and um, and so I'm going in to view the program, to view the facility, um, see what it's all about, and learn just a little bit more, and see how perhaps um, we may be able to help more with this cause caregiver adult room at Blue Butterfly and this room is for the adult caregivers of the children that come to Blue Butterfly so when we come they come as a unit their children come the teens come and the adults adults come in this room for their support group which is led by a clinical professional social worker mental health counselor and they get a chance to talk about the death and how the loss has affected them but really get a chance to also learn how the kids are grieving and what to expect with their grief and also learn ways to connect with them and support them so if we're doing an our project with the kids we're gonna do it with the adults too so that they have an opportunity to try it out and then try to do that with their kids later or even to talk about their own grief they might do a mask where they're painting feelings and that's talking about their own stuff too so this group is really key to the children's success but also the adult success you have to be a part of it you can't just drop your child off you have to be a part of it and it's because we want them to heal together we want to bridge the gap of, um, no, I'm not grieving alone in my silo. You know, we're grieving as a family. We all lost the same person, but we're here to talk about it and to grow. And you can't do that alone. On Family's First Day, they come here to the Blue Butterfly for a tour and an intake assessment. And the purpose of that is so that we can get to know them and they can get to know us. We want to understand their grief history. If there's been another death in the family, we want to understand the family dynamics with them and the person who died. Um, and understand what they know about the death because that's very important to how the healing will happen. But on their first day, it can be a little nervous and scary. Uh, so we welcome them to come to the Teddy Bear Library. Um, the library is filled with all different types of stuffed animals and it's really an opportunity for them to get a gift from us, kind of a welcome where they feel a little less scared, um, but also when they go into that session and they have that intake um, and they get hugs, they can hug their bear and they can feel a little bit safer. So it's a really special way to welcome them. This is our memory wall. This is probably my favorite place in the whole building. Um, when children come, they are invited to place a picture of their special person on the wall. Uh -huh. And the idea is that this is their place to remember them, right? So you get to put your person up and every time you get to go and you get to say, you know, this is my dad, this is my sister. They love sharing their person off. They'll take it down, bring it to their group, show it to everyone. But the best part about it is that their face is just lit up, so excited, so happy. <sighs> We tell them that here their pictures will never come down. If you think about when families change as the grief continues or as they start to heal, sometimes pictures come down in the homes, especially if a parent remarries or it's too painful to have them up. So we tell them that here they will always be up. They never have to worry about them coming down. And that's really cool. I also like to share the picture of my dad um, because I put him up as well since my dad died when I was a kid. And I share that with the kids because I want them to know that this happened to me too. Um, and that my dad is special and I remember him. Um, I have, you know, the kids want to put their picture like right next to mine. She's like, can I put it next to you? <laughs> of course. But it's, it's so sweet, you know, and it reminds them that, well, hey, we're all in this together. We're all a big family. Volunteers. Basically the way it works is every group has a facilitator, okay? So a clinical professional to lead the group, lead the discussion. 
they're the ones looking for that um, therapeutic component, trying to, to put that therapeutic component into the group. The volunteers are trained to use a tool we call reflecting. This helps them to literally be a perfect mirror to the child. So when the child shares a story, they reflect back the story so that the child knows that they were they were heard and that they were listening to them. And that's really important because when, sh when a child shares something about their special person, we want them to know we are listening. We heard you, that was important to me, share more, right? Because we want them to share more. So the volunteers help with that. The volunteers are here to kind of be a safe person next to the child. They might sit side by side in a bean bag. Um, they might work one-on-one -on -one with a project together. But the idea is that the volunteer really can provide that support to the child so that they're not alone during the process. Individual sessions, like this particular picture was one that I actually had a kiddo do. She was actually closer to 12. So this did not come out of a little, but this is also a tremendous amount of work. It was kind of the same. I can move it closer to you if you need. Um, I was also based out of the same question. Draw me a picture of what your grief looks like. And many children wow. are not this ornate and not this detailed. And you guys can pass it around if you would like. Wow. Um, for our littler friends, most times I'll turn them into grief monsters or grief zombies. And then what I'll typically do after that is then get them to make like a 3D figure of it. The last time I did it was with a little boy who was eight and he actually made one out of um, Model Magic and named it Zack and named it Zack the Zombie. <laughs> and so he took it to his house and then he said what he did, what he does with it is whenever he feels like his grief is kind of beating up on him, he turns around and he talks to it. He turns around and tells his grief how he feels. You know, Zach, get away from me, leave me alone. I don't wanna think about X, Y, and Z thing. So he's actually using it as a tool to move through his grief. But um, this particular photograph is after, um, I would say what, months? Mm -hmm. <laughs> months of work of getting her to this place. But this is just an example of what, you know, some of this work can truly do to help children express themselves. And so over here is a very common activity that we do is with the masks. So with these masks, um, one thing that a lot of people don't know about kids that's different from adults is as adults, we can kind of compartmentalize our grief. Like we can be sad, but say, okay, now we know we have to go to work and put on the professional face and then we can go home and fall apart. Go home and do whatever we need to do to grieve appropriately. Children, most especially all the little ones, they don't have that ability. So when they feel it, they do it and they show it. But what we like to use the mask activity for is a lot of times we show different things to different people and in different places. So on the outside we have, you'll see different um, colors here and each color is representative of a feeling. And on the outside is what they show to their friends, show to the world every day. So we might have anger, sadness, um, happiness, worry, and then, but really on the inside, this is what they're feeling. They may be feeling lots more anger, more sadness, and I can't remember the last two. Lonely and confusion. <laughs> Thank you. Lonely and confusion, but this is what they're keeping inside. But it also gives us insight as facilitators to kind of see, okay, so what are these kids really holding on to that it may not be easy to verbalize or that it may not be easy to say, but also can create great conversation in a group. Little's room. Um, littles are five to seven year olds and typically when they come here it's a little nervous right they're they're feeling nervous they don't want to separate from their caregiver that comes but once they come into this room they they're definitely more relaxed it looks fun it's it's easy breezy um, and they, they do well we always start in a circle here on the blue rug um, and we do a check-in and each of the kids has a little stick person um, where they decorate the person to look like them and then they place it in a jar based on how they're feeling today we have three feelings typically sad mad or happy thank you so here's our little stick person we'll put it in the jar sad mad or happy and that's kind of how we know how the kids are doing um, for littles this is a really good way for them to communicate with us because it's not as abstract you know they can identify how they're feeling by putting their little guy in there and then we know how they're going to be in group that day uh, it's cool because at the end of group we'll do it again and then they might all be in the happy jar because they, they kind of boosted up their mood from sharing and from processing. Team room. Um, this room is meant to be very motivational for our teens. We want them to feel like they have an opportunity to look towards their future. When someone significant dies for teens, they think like their world is ending, um, that what's the point of life? So we want them to really be able to focus on the future. 
Um, this room, the teens has turned out to be one of my biggest groups um, because like I said, that three times, if you give it three chances and you come, I bet I can win you over um, because you finally feel heard. You feel like, oh, I'm in a place where I get to talk about me. No one's shutting me down. No one's telling me to stop talking. And that is amazing. Typically, when we come into the grief cave, we shut the doors and we like to turn off the light, but you probably won't be able to see it. Basically, this is their safe place to come in the dark um, and write a message or a story or a picture to their special person who died. So if we have the black light on and the special markers and with the lights off, they're just in the dark and no one's judging them, no one's making eye contact with them, it's quiet, and they, they write messages. So you can see some of the beautiful artwork and the messages, just, you know, Ethan, I miss you very much. I miss you every day. Um, this one was, I miss your belly laughs. If you think about it, sometimes the group environment can be really heavy and too much. Sometimes they just need to get out of there. Um, we let them come in here with a volunteer and they can just do their brief work in here by themselves. And it's, it's so therapeutic just to be able to get some of it out. Get it out of your head, onto the wall, and then you share it with others. And it helps other people too. It's a little messy, so forgive me. Uh, but typically before COVID, this was our dining room. We start all of our group nights off with a meal that we provide to the families because we want to take away all the barriers, right? The, the idea of, oh, it's too, it's too close to dinner time or I have to get from work to here and I don't have time to feed my kids. No problem. We're going to have dinner with you. And it's such a special time. If, if you have had a loss, you know that dinner time is tough because of the empty chair, right? It used to be four of you and now there's an empty chair. Um, and so here there's never an empty chair because it's always completely packed. Um, but it's an opportunity for the families to meet together, have dinner. It's a good icebreaker so that they get to see each other before they go into that group environment.